your daily newspaper. News that comes to us fresh, gathered and written and printed by the men and women of the press. Get your morning paper, morning star, read all about extra, it. Extra, extra, read it all about it. Board. Extra, morning extra, paper. read all about it. Extra, extra. Doesn't anybody read these things anymore? Huh? reason. Newsroom. Champ sighting? I'll get two of my best reporters on that right away. Hold on. Oh, it's you guys. Uh, you'll have to do. We'll have uh, two reporters there right away. Thank you. Two reporters. I did the last champ sighting. Hey. <laughs> Make him do it. No complaining. <laughs> Welcome to Travels with Charlie, Vermont politics and real life. Today we're going to be discussing the media, print journalism, and I've got two veteran reporters with me today. Mike Donahue worked for the Burlington Free Press for more than 45 years. Guy Page, the Colchester Chronicle with uh, Page Communications and now uh, the Montpelier, the headliners, Vermont headliners doing lots of work, uh, lots of writing, lots of discuss. There's been a lot of changes over the years since uh, you guys first started. So, Mike, more than 50 years you've been in the newspaper industry. What are some of the changes that you've seen over the years? Well, I think the biggest thing is that probably there have been more changes in the last 20 years than the previous 200. I mean, just the way news is gathered. When I got to the free press, there was basically one deadline every night, 11 o'clock. And as long as you hit that deadline, you were fine. Now with instant communications and everybody wants to see it online and Facebook, wherever, they want the news right away. So uh, whereas I would say, you got plenty of time to call me back. Now reporters are saying, I need you to call me back right away. We're posting a story in the next half hour. Got to get it. You know, if you don't, we'll update it later. Guy, where do you see it going from here? Will newsprint be obsolete in 15 or 20 years? Will we have a printed paper? Will we get up and read a newspaper? I think there'll always be a newspaper, but the question is what's gonna be on that newspaper? And I think the idea of national news and international news and people getting up to see what happened in Washington, I think that's toast and it probably has been really for 10 years or so. I think it's the local news, however. If you look around Vermont newspapers, the local newspapers, the community papers, they're actually doing pretty well. Right. Because well, you published given, the Colchester Chronicle for I many did, years. Yes. Again, a very popular newspaper because it was local. You'd find things in that paper that you wouldn't find anywhere else. That's right. I used to say that if the governor were shot in Burlington, it wouldn't make the Chronicle unless he staggered across the town line into Colchester. Yeah. You know, it's, it's got to be local. When I worked for the, a paper in Jeffersonville, I used to think that my stories about the Vermont Electric Co-op and these big long think pieces on electric power policy were the most interesting thing. And then I'd see the ladies going to the store, picking up the paper, rip yeah. right past the front page <laughs> and go to the social news. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in Jeffersonville? And I, I learned something, local, local, local. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that I saw in my lifetime, uh, some of us who are old enough will remember when the CBS Evening News was 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, wow. it was 1963 when they announced they were going to a half hour. And yeah. I remember talking at the dinner table, having a discussion with my father and the rest of the family. And I was like, how will they ever <laughs> fill it. the other 15 <laughs> minutes? Man. I just, wow. I just, it was like mind boggling to me that there would be enough news and everything like that. And, you know, I think we've also seen the pendulum swing the other way too, where, you know, now we have an hour and a half yeah. of quote, local news. Yeah. But if you watch that local news, there really isn't local news. A lot of, here's a national story and right. here's a gimmick yeah. and here's somebody with a unusual pet and here's something like that. It's not, but there's also, you, you bring up a great point, Mike. You talk about filling a half hour, now filling an hour. Well, it's easy because it's not just news, and they label it that way. It's news and commentary. And people tune in because they want to hear what Shep Smith has to say or what, you know, 
Sean Hannity has to say. Mm -hmm. It's not just the news, it's what's their opinion. When I started in the business, there was a saying, when you wrote a story, you wrote with nouns and verbs. Huh. Simple nouns and huh. verbs. There were no adjectives, huh. yeah. there were no adverbs, it was all nouns and verbs. Yeah. And so- Were, were we people, ever so young? People, 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 yeah. And, God, and, you interned with him. I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> some of the media makes no hesitation right. about coloring it to yeah. some extent. Yeah. Nouns and verbs. Yep. I keep thinking nouns and verbs. All right. yep. All right, now for the game show portion of our program, the most outrageous headline that you've either read or you wrote. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to recall, and bring it up, starting now, go. Outrageous headline that you wrote or you read somewhere, you're sorry you wrote it, four, three, two, one, pens down, all right. Hey, pens down. Pen, whoa, pens, <laughs> oh, hey. Come on. <laughs> the professor's giving you a hard time yeah. again, yeah. huh? You want to go first, Mike? I'll let him go All first. All right, we'll, we'll let Guy I, go I first. I think the idea Guy? is to make a boring story, try to make it interesting, and mine was uh, hot stove fails to explode, woman and child unharmed. <laughs> you actually wrote that? No, no, actually I heard about it, though. Someone else yeah. did. Mike? Uh... Officials, highway deaths fall short. So, <laughs> now give us the backstory so on it. And I wrote that. I wrote you, that one You're time. taking credit I, for I was, that. I, I, here's what happened. Did it get printed? No. no. Oh, the editor good, did not like good. it. But what, what happened was National Highway Traffic Safety had predicted 500 people were going to die over 4th of July or Memorial Day weekend. I think it was 4th of July. And I was working... Um, day or two after and they had the final tally yeah and you know there were only 395 instead of the 500 they projected wow. missed the mark so i i just said <laughs> highway deaths fall short we're not working and, hard and the editor thought that was a little <laughs> too well, see, I, I think mike you know, wins but I, <laughs> I think you're and right he wrote it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, boss. How you doing? <laughs> Let's talk, you know, sometimes I think it's not just the print anymore because, well, you know, again, case in point, Burlington Free Press. You can just, you can subscribe online. You don't have to get a printed paper. You subscribe online. What I find interesting is there's still a huge audience out there, but they're preparing for the future. Uh, not just the Free Press, but the Herald, well, and Herald Times, Argus, yeah. I know, Bennington and Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. Although Bennington, Brattleboro, and Pittsfield, Mass, there's been an interesting story about the resurgence of those papers, yeah. the print version. Yeah. Uh, the Associated Press did a story recently right. about those papers and the circulation going up on the print side, or at least holding steady because people are want their local news and everything like mm -hmm. that so one of the things that has to stay strong is the the quality the local quality of the news reporting itself and i think you know you're seeing uh, uh unfortunately the turnover rate among reporters mm. whether it's tv or newspapers or whatever is 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 having an impact on yeah. local news We're all rolling. Yeah, you're, 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 you're the let's leader roll the over here. <laughs> Come on, guys. Ah, this is fun. Right. Over there, Mike. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Either of you ever sell newspapers? I had a walking route. I did Ooh. the old fashioned. Oh yeah, I, I walked the paper. I had a big wow. route. Yeah. He later later was an inserter at the Free oh, Press. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Putting, you know, big advancement. <laughs> <laughs> First media job. Well, let's talk about some of the other. You know, you talk about uh, the influence of the web and clicks and all of that, uh, and with that you have. You don't need to work for a newspaper. You don't need to work for any media outlet. I just, I have a Facebook account. I see news. I put it on. It's sure. citizen, citizens reporting. But with that, um, sometimes, you know, all the facts aren't straight. And, and people that read mm -hmm. that, they, you know, they're not sure of the sources and all. Good, bad. What do you think, guys? There's an old saying in journalism, 
you know, how do you know something is true? Yeah. When your mother says she loves you, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> you know, how do you know something is true? Yeah. And, and we saw that, whether it's uh, the Boston uh, Marathon bombing and other things where misinformation right. was put out there. Yeah. And I think we've got to be careful. Mike, I'm going to push back a little bit on that. Um, the traditional media sometimes, I think, gets off in its role of being the gatekeepers. We control what the stories are. We decide what the news is. Yeah. And frankly, I like the individual saying, I think this is news, and here I'm going to shout it to the world, and let, let the world decide whether it's news or not. Guys, how do we ensure that we have continue to have a free press in this country? We were able to have uh, reporters that aren't afraid to report the news. Um, they're going to report the stories in a true manner and not report it in a way so we can sell papers. How do we ensure that? Get a multitude of different sources of news and let the market, let the readers decide what's important and what isn't. To me, that's the best long-run solution. I know there's pitfalls all the way with that, but letting the, the, uh, and the enlightened self-interest of the average American say, I think that's important, and I frankly, I don't think that's important. I think it's critical that, uh, you know, the public is engaged in the democracy. That's what really matters, yeah. that people need to hear what's going on in their community. You know, even things like uh, the watching your governmental meetings, you know, gavel to gavel coverage. Some of that can be pretty boring, but you know what? That is our democracy in action. It is ensuring the First Amendment. And without those uh, meetings being covered, our democracy is going to suffer. But we need people out and about, keeping an eye, being a watchdog. Well, it's all about. Thanks to my guests for being with me today, veteran newspaper journalist Guy Page. And Mike Donahue, thank you both for being with us today. Mike's really going to prove it. Old school. Get the notebook out, Mike. We're going out on the job. We're going. We're going Here we go. Find a story. Yeah. <laughs> find, let's go find a story. I'll see you in my travel. I'll be hanging round, covering lots of ground. If you'd be so kind to share what's on your mind, it's time well spent. The talking president, though we may not agree.